Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the program. I'm so excited to have with me a author, educator, entrepreneur, poet, a lifelong learner. And uh, as Stuart Scott used to say, this guy is cooler than the other side of the pillow. <laughs> I'm happy to have here today, Mr. Raul Marin. Raul, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you, Miguel, for having me. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir. Now, one of the biggest, biggest things that you've been working on is your book. But before we jump into that, for those who aren't familiar with the work you've been doing, let them know about yourself. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to. I, I, I'm a man of many passions. I have a lot of different professional hats that I've worn throughout the years. Um, 17 years as, a, as an educator, uh, specifically teaching English, uh, adults English uh, as a second language. Uh, 17 years as uh, DJ Rumba, as for those that might know me uh, as DJ Rumba. If you don't, I'm DJ Rumba. <laughs> <laughs> 17 years of that. Um, about three years ago, I started to get a little bit into photography as well. I'm still learning the ropes of that, specifically the editing side. Um, boy, can I tell you, it, it is a whole nother animal to to edit pictures. Not, not, I mean, I have fun just, you know, click, click, click. But once you get into the editing, that's where the sweat starts. <laughs> uh, a little bit of that. And uh, in the last two, three years, I've, I've also um, just really centered in on, on the, the writer slash poet in me um, that was always there. It's just, uh, you know, I finally decided to ignore those automatic negative thoughts in your mind, right? Um, and I said to myself, you know what, if, the, if I've got that talent, then it's my time now to share it with the world, because I really believe that if you've got talents, then it's, it's best, the world benefits from them, right? Not mm -hmm. instead of you keeping them to yourself, just share your talents with the world. Everybody benefits. You talk about um, the multiple. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about the multiple hats that you've worn, as you said, a jack of all trades, so to speak. Um, you know, oftentimes people have the feeling that it's an end or situation when they are pursuing a passion. Talk a little bit about overcoming this idea that you have to choose. You know, um, I, I'm a big believer in, in your gut feeling because your mind and your heart are not always going to be on the same page, unfortunately. <laughs> so oftentimes I, I, I have found that listening to my gut feeling can really help me stay on the right path. And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about how I eventually became uh, what everybody knows me today as DJ as Rumba. Um, I wanted to be an actor. You know, I love, I love acting. I, I studied acting for a year. I loved it. Um, but, you know, life got it. Life uh, knocked on my door and said, you know, you got to go take another out because, you know, I wasn't getting any work from it. So um, I, I switched my major from theater performance to radio broadcasting and um, loved my time in the studio and, and recording commercials and PSAs and weather and the, the whole, the whole legislative. In my last semester of the program, I had the opportunity to be a DJ on the college's radio station, which was not an AM or FM station. It was an online radio station. And, uh, and after my first show, I had, we had to follow up with our professors so they can give us feedback. And what he said to me was, you know, Raul, you were fantastic. You know, you had the energy and you read everything with clarity and, you know, amazing show. <laughs> I just need you to do one thing for me. Get ready, get ready for this drum roll moment in my in, in my life. And he, what he said to me was, I need you to Americanize your name. Mm. Well, like, uh, and I'm just like deer in the headlights, right? Like, with, with, <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. He's like, excuse me? He's like, I just need you to, you know, Americanize your name. You know, it's going to fit better with our listeners. And I said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay if you don't have anything right now, but uh, you know, um, just come back to class and we'll figure it out. But uh, good job, good job. 
what do I say to such a question? I go home and I talk to my parents about it. They're completely like, you know, how dare this man ask you such a question? <laughs> um, like, it's unbelievable. And I said, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, well, <clears throat> here's this crossroads moment again, where I'm like, acting didn't work. I came to radio broadcasting. Now my professor comes with this bold, crazy question. And if I choose not to follow his request, then, you know, I'm short again. So, you know, at, at that point, I wasn't a matter of me just choosing. It was like, you know, I felt in my heart that like, this is what I want. This is what I need to do mm -hmm. because I know that what I'm, what's coming, what's going to be on the other side is going to be my, my, my future career. Right. So I said to myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to roll with it. And, um, whatever American name he decides to give me, it's still going to be all me in the studio, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when he asked me the next, you know, the next class, if I came up with the name, I said, no, I'm, so, I'm sorry, professor, but I didn't. He said, it's okay. We're going to come up with the name for you. He wrote three names on the board. I, to this day, I still don't remember what the other two were. I just remember the one that they chose for me. And, you know, everybody voted on, on you know, class, we're going to we're going to vote on Raul's uh, radio name for the semester. And like, you know, kindly, uh, you know, write on, on this piece of paper here, which name you think best fits him. And sure enough, the name that they chose for me was Chris Martin. <laughs> 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 okay i didn't see that one coming <laughs> oh my goodness so yeah i was chris martin that whole semester <laughs> do i do i regret it definitely not because it was it was fantastic <laughs> okay so how do we give from chris martin <laughs> to to you know dj rumba how do we get to that transition so after the i, I had another crossroads moment um i i i realized that uh, you know to make it big in radio you really have to be in radio for a long time like i feel like you know the morning show hosts especially they're probably the ones who are the most successful because they've been in radio for, for years mm -hmm. right but they started somewhere and I figured, you know, that's probably the same trajectory that I need to, 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 to do. And uh, there was this rising and in, in popularity Latin radio station that uh, was starting to, um, to hire. And I applied for this position. And uh, little did I know that uh, the position they were looking to fill was what they called the graveyard shift. <laughs> so like 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. when the morning hosts would come, I'd just be in the studio to pushing a button. <laughs> Not what I wanted to do, right? I, just, I wanted to be on the microphone and everything. And uh, at the time, it was coming up on a big European trip that I was going to do because I had just, so I had just graduated from college. My younger sister was turning 15. And as you know, us Latinos, we, we celebrate quinceañeras mm -hmm. you know, all out. <laughs> she did not want to go that route. She just she was fine with just a small, intimate family dinner because what she wanted was to go to Europe, mm -hmm. specifically to Italy, because she's a she's a big fan of the uh, gladiator film with uh, Russell Crowe. Yep. And it was her dream to just go to the Coliseum. That's right. that's what she wanted for her 15th birthday. And my parents were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. Um, so it's like, do I go to Europe or do I stick around and I do this, you know, push the buttons. <laughs> push the buttons you know, oh. And I and he said to me, you know, it's like the position's yours, you know. I like, you know, I did well on the interview. He said, but um I can't guarantee you that you're gonna have the job when you come back. Hmm. So I'm like, you're a push the button guy. I'm like, I, I don't know if I'll ever go back to Europe. So I went, I, I'm, I'm doing the Europe trip. <laughs> <laughs> I came back, I connected with an old college friend, and he told me about this guy who's a contractor. And so he contracts his DJs, and he's got this big company. Probably I, at the time, I think there were 13 of us. Mm -hmm. And he has, he has his garage full of DJ equipment. 
what I what I had to, what I quickly learned is that it was a lose lose situation for me in terms of timing. Mm -hmm. Like this guy lived forty five minutes from my house, so when I had a when I had a, a weekend to, uh, with a gig to do, I'd have so calculate forty five ish minutes to drive to the to the guy's house, load my car, drive to the venue, set up the equipment play the music for however long the event was supposed to be, take the equipment down, load my car, drive back to the guy's house, drop off the equipment, and then finally drive to my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what did I do? I, I learned anything and everything I could within those two years and change. And I realized that like, I'm pretty good at this. Like I could see myself doing this in the long haul. But but you know with 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 my own terms like my own stuff, my own clients. Uh, so I saved everything I made with him, and I got my own stuff, because I just knew it. it I mean, not to mention the fact that he was making the bulk of the money. Like he was just paying me like you know like a piece of like a piece of pie of, of <laughs> a fraction. Like one side, outside of like you know the full you know yeah if, if, if that way. He was making the bulk of the money. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I saved everything I could. I learned, you know, all the ins and outs of, of just being like a DJ, which is just more than just, you know, playing the butt, right? <laughs> you're the MC. You're the, you're the, you're the, the life of the party. Like if you suck, then the party sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and I've, I had situ I was just telling uh, another, uh, I had a virtual coffee with another mm -hmm. Connected Leaders Academy member. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him, I once did a wedding where 10 minutes before the wedding is supposed to start, my computer crashes. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nervous wreck trying to, trying to get it fixed. I can't fix it. And sure, lucky enough, the groom brought his computer. Mm -hmm. Why did he bring his computer? Who knows? <laughs> but he brought it. So the only thing I could do the entire wedding was to do YouTube videos, one after another. But I, I did it in a way that, you know, the, the, the guests were not, you know, listening to a song, fade out completely, come by, followed by commercials, mm -hmm. followed by... <laughs> So I'd open multiple tabs so that I could play the YouTube, the, 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 the songs, you know, back to back. And nobody, nobody would have known that I played the music that way without me knowing it in the first place, that that's how I had to do it because my computer just absolutely crashed on me. You talk so, about these, you, you know, you talk about these moments where uh, you call it drum roll moments, the, that crossroad moment. And so often, you know, we, we get to that crossroad, we have a dream, we have a vision, a goal we want to accomplish, but we get to that crossroad and it's like, okay, you know, am I going to be willing to drive the 45 minutes, go to the venue, come back, leave the equipment, drive 40, like whatever, you know, mm -hmm. equivalent of that story, we all have a, a similar with regards to that crossroad. Now, initially mm -hmm. you said, you know, it's about following your gut. What do you tell that individual that right now is on that crossroads and is like, I, I want to go uphill, but that journey is often one very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. you, I, I would tell them, you know, the first step is always the most important one, which is usually the hardest one they take, right? There's, there's that fear. There's those, that doubt, you know, can I do this? Uh, um you know, being an educator for 17 years, uh, one of the questions that I always got asked all the time, how long is it going to take me to learn to speak English the way you and I are speaking? And mm -hmm. my answer is always the same. How hungry are you to learn it? <laughs> <laughs> I get this blank look and I'm like, I can't answer that question for you because that's very subjective to how your work ethic, you know, your commitment, your effort. Uh, your passion to really learn this language uh, and, and what you want to use it for. Because it's one thing for me to just say, I want to do this. Do you know the why about it? You know, is it, is it career-based? Is it academic-based? Is it a hobby? 
Um, is it a hobby that you want to turn into a business? Um, and if you know, once you answer those questions, then it's just a matter of you really being committed to the process because there's gonna be falls, there's gonna be trips and and you know, it's not gonna be all sunshine and rainbows the way uh, this guy Rocky would say in his <laughs> film, right? <laughs> but you can't give up either. Like you just can't give up because that's the, the uh, you you learn the most from failure. I mean, failure is just, uh, I, I, and I wish I could memorize that quote between failure and opportunity. Uh, fail, failure is uh, opportunity. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember the quote, but, you know, failure is, is not uh, the, the, the problem with, with somebody's journey if they're at that crossroads right now. Mm -hmm. If they know in their gut uh, that, you know, they're, they're really passionate about something. And if they're second guessing themselves, it's probably the right decision for them to take. It's just, they're, they're, they're afraid, right? Of failure. Can't be afraid of failure because failure is actually my, my best teacher. Mm -hmm. It can be your best teacher. Um, but it's, it's that commitment, full commitment to the process of, of where you're trying to go. Um, and, and have your, have your, the right support system, the right mentor, um, friends, teachers, I mean, everybody, you don't have to do this process alone. Um, so I, I would say that. You go from being Chris Martin to becoming yeah. <laughs> DJ Rumba. Mm -hmm. And of course, here yep. today, we're sitting with the wise wolf himself oh, yeah. with the <laughs> amazing book <laughs> that's coming up rise with gratitude for those who aren't familiar about the the passion behind the book and what the book is about let them know about the book yeah man um i i've always been the writer in the family you know i i would get compliments from my teachers back when i was in middle school you should tutor people <laughs> you, i mean you got a great paper so i i would get the chats all the time yo raul like do my homework dude <laughs> <laughs> I ask that all the time. Uh, writing's just always been something that that uh, it just comes naturally to me. And um, you know, um, for the longest time, I, I just had this. You know, I I I did not have the confidence in myself to 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 live something with writing. You know, I'd, I'd always question, well, who's going to read it? What am I going to write about? You know, all these things. Uh, my mom would always be like that positive voice in my mind, like, you can do this. You know, she, she used to raise me saying to myself three things. I think I can, I know I can, and I will. Hmm. I want you to say it until, until you believe it. Don't just say it to say it. Like, I think I can, I know I can, I will. Because I'd say, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. Oh, I can't do this. It's complicated. She'd never want to hear any negativity out of my mouth. <laughs> Uh, but fast forward to about uh, two years ago, um, when the right when the pandemic started, I connected with with our mutual friend uh, Jose Escobar. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. he he invited me to join a, a program that was spirit, mind, and body focused. I had never taken such a program, and that's when the real wheels really started turning in my mind about my confidence in myself to you know pursue something that i'm passionate about like writing that i can do with ease but that you know there's a reason why if, if i'm gifted with it there's a reason why i'm gifted with it mm -hmm. therefore i need to write a book <laughs> <laughs> so that, that process like really started to tweak my mind about how life is life is a school you know, you, you can't, you can never settle because when you, the moment you settle, that competition is going to roll you over. <laughs> you gotta keep learning, got to keep growing. You got to keep feeding your mind the right things. And, and in my case, just, just keep on writing. And as I continued to do that, and it became a part of my, my daily habits, um, that's when I started to realize is like, the same motivation and these same life lessons that I've learned, I want to share them with people. And the reason that's the reason why I, I titled the book the way I have, because I mean, I could say, sure, I wake up, but the, the, the motivation and the courage you feel to get after success when you say, I rise today, 
<laughs> oh man, <laughs> there's nothing like it. Uh, gratitude to me is is my my key ingredient to success with whatever we do every day. Um, growth mindset, and you know, um, I've I've got, I've listened to so many. I've been to so many events where they say it's not that you want to be with like minded people. You want to be with growth minded people mm -hmm. because growth minded people are all about you staying the course of success, which is lifelong. Mm -hmm. You'll never just, well, I did this and I'm done. They, they just stay on that path and they continue to learn and they continue to grow. And I, and I like to say, you know, you're, you're that much closer to living your dream. So keep on growing and greatness. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a personal goal of reading 12 books a year. So I, re I basically want to read one book a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm, on I'm on book number seven now. The last book I just read was Better Than Good by Zig Ziglar. And that's where I really learned the enemy of great is good. Mm -hmm. Like why settle for good when you can be great? And, you know, I really, in, the, in, the, in my book, I, I, all of the poems, they all kind of touch on those three things for me gratitude, growth, greatness. And it's, and it's, it's my, it's my lifelong learner and growth mentality all captured in that book. The book is available online. And for those who want to connect with you or obtain the book, let them know how they could do so. Uh, so <clears throat> it is available for pre-sale now. Um, I should have it uh, ready to be uh, like ready to get in my hands by the end of the month. But uh, you can pre-sell now at RaulThePoet.com. Awesome. Awesome. And I would thank you so much for being uh, on the program and just for the amazing, amazing guy that you are. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, continue to grow the way you are with this platform that you're doing. Like that's, that's your passion right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's your talent that you get to share with the world. So please, thank you and and continue to to shine the way you do with this platform this pod podcasting passion that you have to share your voice share your talents and if you're listening you know continue to do what it is that makes you smile don't don't ever forget the the, the value of a good smile that, that when you see somebody and you and you see it in yourself something that makes me smile even if it's going to be is it, even if it's going to take me a long time to get there Listen to listen to your gut, and you're going you're going you're going to achieve it. Um, so yeah, that that would be my last words. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you.